Hello everybody, in this video we're going to look at lossy compression. Alright, let's get going. So review, we learned about encoding which takes stuff from the human world and transfers that to the computer world. The computer world stores things in bits, but bits cost money. So then we learned about a technique called compression which helps us store the same information with less bits. So then we saw this table about lossless compression and lossless compression is reversible. So I can compress and uncompress something reversibly with no loss of information, which is awesome, but it's got limited compression capabilities, meaning that usually I cannot compress a ton with lossless compression. When I absolutely positively need to have maximum compression, I'm gonna use a technique called lossy compression. Lossy compression, not lossless. This is gonna give me big, big compression at the cost of losing information when I compress and uncompress. And it's not going to be reversible, so it's permanent. This widget is from code.org. It gives an example of lossy compression. So at the top, we have the original text. At the bottom, we have the compressed text, and it's compressed 22%. And what's going on here is that we're removing every vowel. And what we're saying is it's still readable even after you've removed every vowel. So the first question that gets asked is, is this compression? And it is, because we have fewer characters than before. And when we have fewer characters, we use fewer bits or bytes. Is this useful? Well, if you need to save space, it is because we've saved 22%. Is it lossy or loss less compression? And the answer is it's lossy because it's not reversible. And you may be saying, yes, it's reversible. I can definitely go back and forth between the two. But let me show you an example of where dropping vowels would not be reversible. If I have this right here and I'm talking about a person, I could be talking about Jalen Rose, the basketball player. I could be talking about Jeremy Lin, the basketball player. I could be talking about Jalen Daniels, the football player, or I could be talking about Jalen Hall, the actor. There's no way that I can with 1000% accuracy go back and forth between my compressed version, which is JLN, and my original version. And if it's not fully reversible, it's lossy. Okay, so here we are with the code.org activity on lossy compression. I'm going to click the run right here. So this image right here, this is full size image, no compression. So now let's see what happens when we start to compress. So I'll move this slider to two. The compression here is 75%. And we get that with the same formula that we used for lossless compression, which is original minus compressed, the whole thing over original times 100. So again, this is 75% compression. And already you'll see that this is bigger than we ever got with lossless compression. Remember we did that first one. We took a long time to do it. It was really hard. And with all that work, we got 42%. So right off the bat, we're hitting 75% with loss C compression. And the image is still pretty recognizable. So now I'll move it to three. This right here is 88% and the image is still recognizable, although a little bit less so. Seven, so this is 98% compression because again, it's loss C compression. We're throwing away information, hoping that it's good enough. And you know, here's about maybe where you start to not be able to recognize the image, but this is at 98% compression. So that's a lot of compression. Okay, now it wants us to give our own image and basically do the same thing. So this is how you do it. I'm going to open up a new window here. The best way to do this is to just search Wikipedia and then whatever you want. So I'll search Wikipedia mango. And the reason is Wikipedia allows you to link to images and not all websites do. So, so again, the safest thing to do is to link to a Wikipedia image. I'm linking to a mango. I'll click on it. I'll click on this. And I need to click, just keep on clicking, keep on clicking until you can't click anymore. And this is the link that you want. You click until you can't click anymore. So this is my link right here. I'm gonna select that, I'm gonna copy it. And then I'm going to run. Then I'm going to click new image. And when it asks for my URL, I'm gonna paste in my mango. And there it is, there's my mango. So let's look at this again, lab part two, is the same as lab part one, except with a different picture. So with that said, I'm going to speed run it now.
Finally, we have a new cell phone plan. We only have two gigabytes of data and we're going to use text, images, video, and music. So where is it best to use lossless compression? And where is it best to use lossc compression? The compression we use really comes down to two questions. One is, do we need high accuracy? And if you do, you should pick lossless. And the second is, do I need high compression? And if you do, you should pick lossc. All right, so let's look at texts first. So you might remember, we did this before, we took out the vowels, it was 22% compression, which is not that high for lossy, and already it makes things kind of ambiguous or not clear. So you can imagine that if we took out a lot more, we got stuff up to 75, 80% compression, things are really not gonna be clear. So with respect to accuracy, texts seem like they should be loss less. Second question of do you actually need high compression? Well, you might think you do, but let's look at this picture right here. So if this big box is my phone storage, Texts are pretty small. So this red box will be my texts. And I'm also gonna have images and videos. And images and videos are big. So hopefully you can see here that, you know, getting an extra 2% or 3% or 10% on my texts is not really gonna matter that much because the size of my texts are dominated by the size of my videos. So in this case, with texts, when you're also having video on the same phone, you don't really, really, really need high compression. So all of this points to using lossless compression for text. All right, so on to audio or music. So the first question we want to ask is, do we need this high accuracy? High accuracy associated with not throwing away data. Given that Apple Music, Amazon Music HD, and now Spotify Hi-Fi have all come out with lossless compression, it seems like somebody does, but are you that somebody? Well, Apple's website says you can't use losslessly compressed music with Bluetooth. And this make use of site says that it's unlikely you can tell the difference unless you have some really good equipment. So I think the answer here is that it depends depends on you, your ear, and how you are playing that music. The second question that we ask is, do we need high compression for music? Music is smaller than video, but not insignificant. So it is something we have to think about. So if you do some research online, what you find is that lossy compression is about five times smaller than lossless compression. So for most scenarios, probably you're gonna use lossy compression for audio, but if you have great audio equipment or your audio file, you might use lossless. Lastly, we're going to look at images and video. They're kind of the same thing. First question is, do we need high accuracy? And we just did this lab. We compressed things 75% and in a tiny screen of a phone, we totally won't notice it at all. So the answer is no, we don't need high accuracy. Second question we'll ask is, do we need high compression? And as we've mentioned before, video files are huge. If you don't compress video files by a lot, you're only going to be able to put one or maybe two videos on your phone. So when you have something huge, you need huge compression. So the answer here is yes, we do need high compression. So images and videos on phones are almost always compressed and they're almost always compressed loss C, loss C. If you're looking for practice questions, I have a link in the upper right. There's a video there which has a lot of practice questions. With that said, in this section, we're going to do some quick practice just to be sure you understood the concepts. And we'll play a game lossy or lossless. Number one, I compress, but later on, I'll need to recover the originals. This one is going to be lossless. And as for why, it's because lossless compression is reversible. That's the concept you need to know. Next one, I have a video that's way too big, but I need to send it over the internet. For this one, I'm going to use lossc compression. And the concept you need to know is that lossy compression gives you more compression or big compression compared to lossless compression. Next one, I compressed a song and the quality of the song is now bad. This could also be true of a video. And the answer here is that it's lossy compression because with lossy compression, we're throwing away data permanently and the quality is going to be worse. Next one, I have some original data, so maybe I'm a studio and I made some original movies or some original recordings and I need to archive them to save space. For this one, it's gonna be lossless and the key here is that we don't wanna lose information. We might want to later edit these videos or remaster the soundtrack. For all of those things, we would need the original data. So the concept here is that we wanna use lossless because there's no information lost and it's reversible. We can compress to save space, but if we needed to go back to the high quality originals, we can, because again, it's reversible. All right, let's check out round two. Let's say we're averaging RGB values to make gray. So you have the red, the green, the blue, you average them all, you make a gray. Is this lossy or lossless? And the answer is that it's lossy, because the concept is that it's not reversible. Once you average three numbers, you have no way of knowing what those original numbers are. All right, number two, we're going to invert the RGB values by subtracting each R, G, or B from 255. So example, if the red is one, the red would then become 255 minus one, 254. 
This one is going to be a lossless transformation because we could reverse it. We'd reverse it by subtracting the new value from 255. So this one is lossless. So these last two questions, they're actually not related to compression at all, but every so often in the practice APCSP questions, I've seen questions like this. They're trying to really be sure that you understand the concepts of lossless and lossy, even when it's not applied to compression. Okay, next one. I'm trying to compress the lyrics to the song Too Legit to Quit. So you might not know this song. It comes from the 80s or 90s or something like that. Here's what it looks and sounds like. All right, so the lyrics here are super repetitive. Loss, less compression comes about because of repeated patterns. So this is an ideal loss, less compression scenario. Lots of repeated patterns. You might also remember that compressing text lossy will make it really, really hard to read. So in general, you're not going to use lossy compression for text. But the more important thing is that you have lots and lots of repeating patterns here because the lyrics repeat. Last one, you have some media, maybe movies, maybe recordings on your home computer, and you're not a pro. This one's going to be lossy for two reasons. The first is that with lossy compression, you're gonna get more compression. So you're going to be able to fit more stuff on your home computer. But the second is, for the most part, with images, sound, you're not gonna notice the degradation in quality. And you just did the slab with the images. Movies are pretty much the same thing, unless you have some very specialized equipment. That's why I said you're not a pro. For the regular amateur person, almost all the media that they have is compressed lossy. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.